Hi guys, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about pop-up flashes. I know that most of your cameras have probably got them. Uh, at times they may have uh, popped up and fired by themselves when you've been taking photos, and so I thought I'd just cover off a couple of points regarding them. Now, as I said, most of you got them, uh, and it, when you're working in sort of like uh, program mode or the green mode or something like that, the camera will automatically pop up that flash when it sort of like thinks that it needs more light within the scene. Now, you don't have any control over that for the vast majority of the time, and a lot of the time you may not know when and when, when you do not need it. Um, but the important thing to note with, the flat, with these pop-up flashes is that you can use them pretty much in every mode that is on your exposure mode that's on your camera. Um, and so you can easily use it in manual or shutter priority or aperture priority. Um, and you can actually activate it manually if, even if the camera doesn't think that it needs the, the pop-up flash or the, the light from the pop-up flash. Now, most cameras have a manual activation button um, and it's normally located around the top here somewhere. This camera here has a button here with a, what looks like a little lightning bolt beside it and that's the button that will actually activate the pop-up flash. If I push it, you'll see it releases the flash and allows it to pop up. You can see the flash is quite small all right, so it's not hasn't got a lot of power, but it is still useful. Um, most pop-up flashes have a guide number of around 10, which means that they can light something up to about 10 meters away, but you really want to work well within that distance. Um, they are more for close com confined type stuff, uh, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat type uh, distance. As I said, I mean, like you can use this in uh, any exposure mode. Um, and when you're doing it that, do, doing that, the flash is fairly automated. You can't really control the power of it too much. Um, and for the vast majority of the time, um, it gets it pretty much right as far as how much flash or how much light is required from the flash. But now and then, I mean, like it won't. It's, uh, if you're photographing somebody, they may appear too bright, and so you need a little bit less flashlight, or they may appear a little dark, and so you need a little bit more. And so there is a button on uh, most cameras that allow you to sort of like increase or decrease that exposure a little bit. Uh, it may be menu based depending on your camera. This camera does actually have a little button. It's that same lightning bolt with a little plus and minus symbol beside it. And when I push that, I can then add in either plus exposure or minus exposure depending on whether I want to add exposure or you know, add more light or take some light away uh, from, from the flash exposure. So on this camera that ranges from it's plus three stops and minus three stops. Uh, each camera is sort of like different as to the amount of range that you've got there um, and how much sort of like you need to change the exposure is probably going to be a little bit experimental. You may have to do a, like a test shot uh, once you've done a change. Um, just have to bear in mind just like exposure compensation that uh, when you dial that in it stays in so uh, you'll actually have to dial it back out um, if you want to, to go back to the neutral point, uh, back to normal flash. Alrighty, so when would we use the pop-up flash? Well, there's a few circumstances that you know are probably quite familiar to you, um, and I've got a couple of shots here that I'm going to just uh, cut to as we talk about this. Uh, one that is quite common uh, when you're photographing inside, especially if you're photographing somebody in front of a window or something like that, is that often you might find that the exposure is actually going to the background or to the outside and your subject which is inside is ends up silhouetted. You could make an exposure for the inside uh, but then the outside will be very overexposed. Uh, so if you're going with the first exposure which is for the outside, activate the pop-up flash to light your subject on the inside. Another one that's um, a lot of people don't use, uh, but it's very useful for making your photographs look a lot better, is if you're outside, say in a summer situation where somebody's wearing a hat or something similar, and normally under normal circumstances you'd go and take a photograph and if they're wearing a hat you might end up with a dark shadow over their face or something like that. If you activate the flash, um, when you're taking your photo that will fire and it will light the shadow area. Uh, allowing you to see into that area. Um, it may not be able to completely light it, uh, but it'll, it'll do a really good job and it'll definitely be better than uh, with no flash at all. Another very similar circumstance to that or the window is if you're doing like a sunset type photo or something like that, you've got somebody f standing in front of a sunset, you take a photo under normal circumstances, they might be quite silhouetted against the sunset, activate the flash and then you can see some detail in your subject. Remembering of course it's all close quarters stuff. I mean like this is quite a small light source and some of these circumstances you're competing against the sun which is uh, substantially stronger than this. 
All right, so I hope that's giving you a little bit of an understanding. Probably the best thing that you guys can do is go out and have a bit of a play with these things and just try experimenting, just uh, give it a go with uh, you know using the flash, not using the flash, putting exposure, uh, flash exposure compensation in and out, um, just getting a handle on sort of like how that works uh, because um, often you'll need it in, you know, you'll be in a pressure shooting situation you know, that sunset and the sun's going down and you want to get a photo with somebody in front of it, um, then fiddling around trying to find those settings is, you know, it's difficult in the pressure situation, so it's best that you know exactly where and how to get to those um, quickly. Okay guys, I hope that's given you a bit more understanding of when and where and how you use your pop-up flash. It's, uh, it's there for a reason, uh, make good use of it. All right, thanks for that and we'll see you next time.